So we're here really at the exit of turn four and if you've driven this track in any sim you'll know the feeling when you've got a horrendous sunset. I want to show you something really interesting. If you have a look at the tyre marks down here, you might need to pan down a little bit, but have a look at the tyre marks and how much rubber is being laid down here when people are really understeering, the tyres are basically gone, and how much rubber they're laying down from the tyres because they're having to steer so aggressively to, um, to get off the grass here. Like this tyre mark is really interesting, I'd love to know who laid this one down. Um, as it curves off really aggressively but this is really not a part of the circuit you want to be on when it's very 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 hot and the tyres aren't lasting up um, people are really having to use the kerb here if you pan up a little bit up here you can see just how dark that red and white kerb is a lot of people are using it you don't have the luxury of being able to quickly get over to the right side obviously you want to open up turn 5 but you can't quite do it so there is a lot of rubber being laid down on this kerb. You might need to pan down a little bit so you can see it. Do a little crep check as well. Don't know what these are, Nike something. But yeah, I absolutely love it because, um, you know, when, when you're on good tyres and you've got good downforce, you don't really need to be over these kerbs. You don't want to risk it on sitting in the car and you, you're making it much tighter um, in turn five if you can't get back over again. So if you pan up a little bit, you see a turn five, where those two ladies are with the umbrella you want to be getting over to where they are to open up that corner so the fact that someone's got tyre marks down here and this might be from the feeder series f2 f3 w series or f1 i don't know but you absolutely don't want to be on this last bit of white curb here on the left i'll show you what i'm pointing at sorry if there's some wind noise it's very windy but this is really you don't want to be here at all so the fact they're here i think just shows how punishing turn four was and turn four really decided a lot of the race although obviously for Verstappen he was able to come back but very lucky escape um yeah pretty incredible really just a really really punishing turn four today this is really the very exit of turn four we're going to turn five next do a bit of a track guide so we'll keep going so we're here at turn well it's really the exit of turn where turn four meets turn five and I just spoke about how you don't want to be where we are right now on the left hand side of the track because you've got to open it up we've all been there but if you have a look down the circuit, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, just how many tyre marks there are all over the circuit. Obviously, some people will be going for moves on the inside, but people were just really struggling to open up this corner, and it was all coming back from turn four. You really want to be turning in. I notice it's actually not on the kerb, but right on the kerb, as in not on top of the kerb, but next to it. And a lot of drivers were struggling to get on over. That was compromising them through turn five. So really they're losing all sorts of time up to turn seven, which is the next big left-hander. It's incredible. We walk over here and see where people want to be. But as we walk over, I don't know if you can see on the tarmac, just have a look at all the different lines going on here. It's crazy. You wouldn't really expect to see that. It's not a massive, massive overtaking opportunity. Now, if you're a Gran Turismo 7 player, you'll know that I talk a lot about the braking marker here is the rubber. So I don't know if you can see this, you might want to bring the camera down a little bit and walk, walk across these kerbs. But you can see as the rubber gets laid down, that's all you really have as a braking marker. There's no brake board here. You haven't got a 50 sign or anything like that. It's such a critical corner because at this point, if you, if you pan over there, I'll, I'll show you where, where it is, you can't really see the apex. You know, it's such a difficult corner and you really compromise on, on entry in this heat and when you haven't got the tyres. But yeah, some drivers coming out here, you know, no, no one's on the gutter. That is, you don't, there's no point going in that far wide. Most drivers staying on the white line, I noticed. So not on the curb, but the white line. And if we come over here, I'll show you where the apex is. It's very interesting. So if you stand here, we'll really see the corner. If you come, come more over here, over here, and we'll see. It's a really interesting perspective of this corner, isn't it, at Turn 5? You just realise how long it is, like it, it goes all the way around and you've got the two sausage curbs there. You definitely don't want to be apexing normally before those sausage curbs. Although I noticed in Formula 1 compared to F2, they were, apart from one driver, apexing a lot earlier. The only driver who wasn't apexing early was Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton was going around this corner and he wasn't even getting close to the white line. And it was a very, and Sebastian Vettel was taking a similar line, wasn't quite so wide. So as we come out over here, you're gonna see, you're gonna see here, we've got some lighter tarmac here.
I don't know if you can see here, there's some darker tarmac, right? See like over here? So most drives in F1 were kind of... Apexing something around here, which is a lot earlier than I would expect. And then kind of shooting off and really turning in just inside of this dark tarmac lines. Apart from Lewis Hamilton, who was staying wide all the way across and basically using that darker rubbered line to get the grip, which is incredible. Yeah, here's one of these sausage curbs. If you just have a look at this, you definitely don't want to be going over 3PAA. But um, you can see, if, in fact, if you come right over here and, and zoom down, you see how they screw these in. It's big hex bolts, so they can put them in and take them out whenever they want. Also a gutter here for draining. But yeah, the F2 drivers, obviously different, smaller engines, less downforce, um, were apexing here. So they were all apexing after this sausage curb. You know it's a weird corner in terms of different formulas because you can see time marks all the way around the corner. So the time marks there from F1, time marks here from F2. It's quite interesting. Let's keep going. So we're here at the exit at turn five. There's a couple of things I want to show you, really interesting things if you've only done this in sim racing. Firstly, look at the elevation change here. Can you see that on the camera? Just how much it drops. And what that means is when you get past your apex there at the sausage curb, the camber is so favorable as you come down the circuit and you can get on the power much earlier than you expect. I think that's the reason why they're apexing a little bit earlier than you might think, because it drops down so much, the camber just really helps you get down that power. Now, this is the other really interesting thing. Now, if you've only done Catalonia and sim racing, I want you to look at the how dark these curbs are, right? So I know a lot of people, and I've done some sim racing coaching from time to time at Catalonia, a lot of people just instinctively don't want to go past this white line. So they'll position the car here, right? For whatever reason, there's curbs here, the white line. So they'll come down out of turn five and they'll stay here. Have a look about how much rubber is laid down on these curbs. I mean, these were white painted curbs. They're now definitely great, even on the green sawtooth. Have a look how much rubber's been laid down. This one's really interesting because obviously on the sawtooth curbs, the, wheel, the rear wheels lift and grip again. Look how much rubber's been laid down on the edge of this sawtooth as the car's bounced. And someone still thought it's viable to do that. Some drivers even to, to completely overtake, dipping a wheel in the gravel. But basically, if you're coming around this corner and on, you're not using these curbs, which you paid for, then you're not doing it right. So <laughs> if the Formula One driver's doing it, I think we should be as well. You can see this white line so much rubber laid down all the way on the exit and you'll see it even in MotoGP as well by the way they're not afraid to use these curbs so that's a real top tip but if we pan around again you can actually really appreciate the camber here so as soon as you get past that yellow sausage curb there which is an early apex than I would expect but in the F1 cars with the, so much downforce they can get on the power and really set her out apart from Lewis Hamilton was basically staying in these rubbered lights see where that couple's walking now with a bag Saying that rubber line, uh, rubber lines, and coming down here—that's the only person who was doing it differently. But he was on a different strat all day. It's often on softer compound tyres. So hopefully that was helpful. Let's keep going to what is. Well, I really want to see this. It's been a while since I came to Catalonia. I've been here maybe six, seven times. I've seen the bikes, seen the F1. I've cycled this on my bicycle. Um, but I really want to see turn seven. See, under, just past the Rolex sign there. That is notionally turn six. It's not a corner in any car really, but they call it turn six. Turn seven is such a critical corner. I'm gonna show you how steep it is. It always surprises me. Surprised me the most when I was here on my bicycle. It is a really, really, really steep corner. Let's go have a look at it and see what we can learn. Right, I wanna show you someone who's had a really bad day on the exit of turn five. We've all been there. If you've been playing a sim and you haven't been quite getting that traction in the rear wheels, that grip, have a look at these tire marks here. So you might want to pan around, if you pan around and have a look at the exit of turn five. Okay, we're not going to do that. But anyway, these lines go straight into... Come with me here, I'm going to show you something really interesting. A couple of things. So firstly, now I'm no expert, but when you have a look at these marks here, and you follow the lines, it looks like someone has absolutely smashed into this. And, um, you know, the actual kind of, um, it's not tech pro, it's a very thin barrier in front of the tyres. If you go over the top, you might want to go over the top. Lots of spiders, by the way. But if you look at how thin this material is, 
obviously getting a tyre has taken a lot of impact. So someone's bounced off here, so I think what's happened. Something else I want to show you, it's a very hot day today at Catalonia. Very hot day. The circuit itself has started to come apart, which is quite incredible. So this is a bit of the tarmac, which um, is just starting to come apart from the track. So that is incredible. I don't know if you can see this here, but a really, 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 really hot day and a very tough day for the drivers. Some party up there that I haven't been invited to. Let's keep, let's keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Interesting tire marks here. I don't know what's happened here, but someone's had a big, big moment. All right, let's walk down. We'll save you the time. Let's walk down to turn seven. Okay, so we're, you join us kind of midway through turn six. I'm about to get copyright struck because of the loud music from the bar. We'll take it. Someone's taken the Rolex sign. This bit of curbing is where you have the short Catalonia track. Not something you have in Gran Turismo, but if you pan it to the barrier, you see when they take those barriers out, you have a short Catalonia Have a look at this edge of the circuit here. This is all torn up. I don't know if you can get a good view of this, but it's absolutely torn up. See, there's a lot of discarded rubber here, which shows that people are really kind of loading a lot into the tires here. And what I want to show you, if you, if you come and stand over here on this side of the curb, on the right hand side, I want to show you just how tight this is. So at the point you're starting to turn in, For turn seven, you cannot see turn eight at all. It's absolutely crazy. Now, most cars you've turned in by this point, but it's been interesting. If you, if you come over here and then pan left, you look around that barrier. Again, the thing you don't get is, have a look at that elevation change. I don't know if you can see it. Pan left. That's a very fast right hand at the top of the circuit. That is going uphill. So if you're in a car that does not have a lot of power, you do not need to scrub off as much speed as you think because gravity is going to do that for you. We can see here they put two more sausage curbs. Um, some people have been grazing them. You don't want to really graze a sausage curb, I think, in any form of uphill, just unbalance the car. But you can see just how much people are trying to cut this corner. So coming in as wide as possible, people even using the mud and the dirt to really open it up. And then you want to apex right here, cut this corner. We'll go up a and have a look at the top of the circuit. If you pan right here, I want you to see these sausage curves, these yellow sausage curves here. They want to stop people cutting this corner as much as possible. Now, if these sausage curves weren't here, people would be using all of this green and then some, and the race director would having to be issue warnings. What these sausage curves do is they really prevent drivers from doing that. In Formula One, the angle you're going over these is going to be pretty risky for your floor. You don't want to get floor damage at a circuit like Catalonia where you're wanting a lot of downforce about the medium speed corners. So you can see here, look at this sausage curb here. How much rubber <laughs> has been laid down on this sausage curb? Because again, you want to cut the corner as much as possible. So if you're sim racing and you're paying good respect to the white lines, you're not really doing it right, dare I say, because the Formula 1 drivers in real life with their real backs and real necks are all over this curb. Look at the amount of rubber that's been laid down here. Pretty cool. That's obviously the apex for turn eight. So obviously it's a really, really, really punishing corner. There's still absolutely, I mean, so many discarded bits of rubber here in the gravel trap. It's really crazy. Tires getting a real punishment going over the sore tooth curbs as well. You'll often see cars go side by side over here and that means for the driver on the inside you're punishing them even more um, if you're trying to sweep around the outside because of denying them the space i might actually take a little seat here man and this it's crazy to think that this is how low they are to the ground let's turn it around actually if you if you shoot me from the other side because this will be quite an interesting thing to see Because the reason I want to show you this is I'm so low to the ground and it's such a steep hill. It's a really, really rear sensation. I feel like I'm going to fall over and chair. You might want to come around behind me actually and look over the top of my head. So if you come all the way behind me and look over the top of my head and you really appreciate the elevation change here when you're so low down to the ground. Obviously I'm used to this in karting. This is how low I sit, but you don't really have these elevation changes in karting. Can you, can you appreciate that? Like this is how low slung I am. My ass just almost kissing the tarmac. It's a horrible image. And 
Yeah, it's, it's, those elevation changes don't really appreciate it on purpose. We'll keep it rolling so you can laugh at me getting out of the chair. What's the most graceful way to do this? Tom, that's really hot as well. I'm actually might be stuck here. Played it cool. Played it nice. Right, let's keep going. This is the very fast, furious turn nine. Let's do it. So something else that's very, very interesting. If you look at these curves, if you compare them to the exit of turn five, where the curves are virtually black, have a look how unrubbered these curbs are. These are curbs you don't want to go over. So when I show you curbs that are really, really dark in colour, that's because they're being heavily used. These curbs aren't. So the exit of turn five, you really do want to be using that. This corner here, there's no real need to get over the left hand side this much. We'll walk up and we'll have a look at the point where the cars turn in. Here we go. This is the very fast turn nine. I think I'm losing track now. But anyway, it's one of these corners that I appreciate a lot in karting. You're coming in very fast and you're actually turning in, I think, after the curb. We can't look back because there's some trucks there now, but you're kind of looking for the white line. So you can look at marks in the white line, very small marks. And you can see here the sausage curb that they put. I think apexing that early here. I think they possibly, if they wanted to stop people kind of getting over the curb, they should have put this a little bit later. So if we have a look at the time marks, um, you saw the sausage curbs down there on the exit of um, turn seven or eight, whichever one it was, the one with loads of sausage curbs on the inside. They've got one solitary long sausage here, it'd be a jumbo sausage in my local fish and chip shop. And there's one solitary time mark on it. So if you have a look where all the time marks are, <laughs> it's over here. So this is the real apex. Um, cars apexing a lot later than perhaps the FIA or the track um, organisers expected, perhaps. Obviously, some catastrophic accidents have occurred. You can see something here that was very interesting. Now, I believe in all of the Formula cars that have raced here, there hasn't been any ABS. But if you have a look at these marks here, I think, possibly, a lot of rubber has been put down and someone doing some kind of manual ABS. So that's quite interesting. Also, a lot of people running wide on the exit possibly turning in and not quite having the downfalls they expected is possible. Now I'm expecting there to be quite a lot of discarded rubber here, let's have a look. Um, it's like flying ant day, except they're all little bits of rubber on the floor. It's because when people have run out of grip and run out of downforce, they have to turn in even harder at this point to avoid getting into the gravel where you're going to use a lot of time. So you can see these time marks here. This is perhaps the most rubbered in area of the circuit. And ironically, it's this green paint. I mean, have a look here, because if you've reached this point and you're not quite, if, you, if you're about to shoot off, you really need to apply some turning input right now. So if this comes across here, you can see just how rubbered it is. And um, this is where it comes to the head. I mean, this painted white curb looks like it's been painted black. You might want to come over here and pan that down and have a look, because this is quite extraordinary. Look how much rubber has been laid down here. I mean, it's like touching an eraser. That is extraordinary. It's like touching a, a penciled rubber or something. A lot of rubber has been laid down there. The telltale rubber signs here, you might want to make sure you pan right and see these rubber signs, people smashing into the tyre barrier where they've just got a bit of oversteer, got it all wrong. And at this point, they're all on the brakes. But unfortunately, all that's doing is laying down rubber onto the, uh, onto the road. So really, really, really interesting here at turn nine. But whatever, it's coming up next. It's a reprofiled left-hander at the end of the back straight. By the way, if you're really enjoying this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Me and my camera lady, we've been out here in like 36, 37 degree heat it was showing ambient temperature so we have sweated and we're staying late to give you this insight into the track I'm not sure anyone else does this maybe there's a reason maybe it's not no one's going to watch this maybe I'm, we're shooting it really badly maybe you can't hear me let me know let's let's pan over here and we'll have a look at the paddock so this is the paddock you can see some of the um i think some of the f2 teams over here and then Closer to the pits, you've got the Ferrari, Motorhomes, Alpha Tauri, McLaren, Formula One have their own one, Mercedes, Williams, 
And all above that is the paddock club. So if you're a rich person, then instead of sitting in the sun like we've done, <laughs> you can sit in the probably air conditioned paddock club. And that is the one of the only covered grandstands at Barcelona, the main grandstand. So if you're sensitive to the heat, don't want to pick up a tan or get burnt, then um, that's the grandstand you want to be on. Let's go over here and get right over by this forklift truck and we'll go to the next corner. Right, so I couldn't come to Catalonia and not show you this absolute icon of the track. How many of us in sim racing have looked out for this thing coming in at plus, I don't know, 120, 130, 140 miles an hour. I'm going to touch it, pay my respects to the braking marker that has saved my life on many an occasion. What should we call it? Sir Pole? Lord Pole? I don't know. Obviously, in some sims, you have the signal box that would hang from this. Um, they may have they may have taken off already. Imagine there was like a safety card board here. But yeah, this is such a critical braking marker. It's actually pretty cool to see it in person since I've been doing a lot of sim racing on the channel. And if you're watching this video, what, running what I do on YouTube, I do sim racing um, at a decent level sometimes. So if you pan over here, have a look at the marks in the tarmac because the rubber really starts from about now. So I'm wondering in Formula 1 if they are also using Sir Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, Charles Leclerc, George Russell Zink, over Formula 1 rap there. I wonder if they're also all using that pole again. So if you pan round to the pole so you can see it and then look at the rubber, the shiny rubber because the sun's shining on it over here. So they're really breaking in a straight line. So actually, you know what? It's actually a little bit Sometimes it feels a little bit greasy. I'm not sure why that is, but you can imagine in in uh, the wet how you really would not want to break on this because this would become slip. The police are coming. Do you want to pan around? We're going to be told we're going to be arrested. Basically, is what's going to happen? Didn't get a license to film this. So I'm going to pretend I'm not filming. Just scratch my nose. Right, the police just told me to start filming. So um, they've actually blockaded us here now. So it might be in a bit of a standoff. I actually don't know how to exit the track. It's going to turn into a bit of a different video, isn't it? How do we leave? Right, so we're here at... I've lost count of the corners. If you pan around a bit, you'll, people will understand where we are. So you get a fantastic view here. We're basically near the end of the circuit. Uh, chain complex. I talked about how you really want to use all of this green paint. And again, if you compare this to some of the curves we've seen elsewhere on track, F1 drivers really have been using this. And I saw some overtakes completed with wheels on the gravel. So you can see the gravel's really being kicked up here. So again, when you come around this corner here, you don't want to pay any attention to the white line. We just stop a bit and we can pan back. If you pan back over here, see the optimal line spinning out of the corner and how much rubber's been laid down there getting on the curb. Like that is part of the racetrack. That is as good as tarmac. So again, if you're doing this in the sim, you want to be maximizing the width of the track getting a wheel on this green paint the Formula 1 drivers are doing it so it's good enough for us and like I said if you try to overtake someone around the outside there because you believe you've got enough grip I think Max Verstappen may have done one in this race Lewis Hamilton as well then if you complete it with a with a wheel just kind of kissing the uh, gravel trap there that is not a problem as long as you can really get at least alongside by the point that you turn in for what is um, the third last right-hander of the circuit? I thought it'd be one of the <laughs> last, but there's quite a few to come actually because of chicane. And what I want to show you here, I want to show you the mountain that is on the inside of the corner here. This is an absolutely huge kerb, if I recall. Let's go have a look at it. We'll keep it rolling. You can see the tyre marks here on the track is just swoop down. And suddenly, again, something you might not appreciate in a sim, but... We're going to lose a lot of elevation here. We talked about corners where you go uphill. This is one where you go downhill. The bikes won't do the chicane. In eye racing as well, if I recall, you don't do the chicane. But let's have a look here. This is not some kind of bodged on sausage curb. This yellow curb here is a real monster. To me, it's kind of the Spanish cousin of the wall at Wilton, which is a curb in England that I've hit quite painfully. But look how high this curb is. Can you see that? Can you just see how ridiculous the curb? You've got, you got the sawtooth curbs. And then this is where some drivers have been knocking it here. So you can see, again, red and white curbs, lots of rubble laid down. 
this is where people are really apexing and some people have rode this curb now imagine just how finely tuned f1 car is with the floor and the ride height there's some big angles here it's not one that i think you want to be hitting and if you pan around here to the left in front of me forget about me have a look at this sausage curb here now they've laid down well this is longer than a jumbo sausage isn't it this is this is like the world's longest sausage much rubber's been laid down here now again you don't want to ride this with your floor you might see some sparks coming up but a lot of drivers have actually so there's some tire marks here where i guess the cars have bounced and the outside rear wheel has laid down a lot of rubber you can see here rubber on the sausage it's a it's a really difficult part of catalonia this it's a people it's a it's a piece that most people hate but we'll keep the camera rolling through this just to kind of show you how it all links together but um, obviously you've got this gantry here, it's not a bridge, it's an advertising thing really, um, which offers a, a reference itself and also the shadow at the time of the day that you're racing. And again, if you're not turning in here on the kerb, you're really probably not maximising it. Uh, driver's not all over the kerb, it's not as rubber as we've seen in other places, but definitely look at this white line. I think a lot of drivers turning here over the white line. And would you have a look at this? For the left-hander, I don't think there's a sausage curb here. Now, <laughs> this is obviously where we saw Charles Leclerc spinning in qualifying in his first run in Q3 before he slotted it on pole. And it was quite an interesting spin. The camber here, you know, I feel like I'm going to fall backwards because the, the track is now really, the, the land underneath the track is really sloping down. Um, but it's obviously where we saw him spin. Now, here's a proper sausage. So we're going to have a look at this one on the apex of the corner. And again, this is one that you really don't want to hit and looks like pretty much no one has because that would be, well, that would be really bad news. Let's have a look at it here. So this isn't like the other sausages they've got at Catalonia. You might need to come a bit closer for this one. This is a very, very, very big sausage curb. Different kind of, it's a bigger sausage. So you can see some drivers have... If you come around the other side, you would see some drivers have kind of kissed it. But definitely paying that one respect, that is a big, big sausage. Let's go over here on the exit of the last corner. So if you come and stand over here, <laughs> if you come and stand over here, we're going to show you the world's longest sausage. I think you need to come a bit closer. So if you come stand over here, right, is that exactly where I'm standing? Like literally exactly where I'm standing. And then if you pan around, have a look how long this sausage is. Can you see? I feel like I should claim it and be like, oh, there's a car coming that might want to ride it. Hear the tyre school. That's race control behaving like absolute hooligans. We can get into the pits. So we'll come across quickly. Oh, I've gone, I've gone roaming, I've gone wandering. So now we'll just roam about. Please, please, please do subscribe, by the way, if you enjoyed this or watched it or liked it. It would make my day. I think we're about 27,000 subscribers, which is absolutely great. Here's the pit lane. So let's have a look at, at the uh, entry of the pits here. Because I believe there's usually a bollard here, but maybe that's one they've taken out or they never put in. So your yeah, entry to the pits, this is the safety car line. Big white line there. And you'll see just how long the pit straight is and how much it dips down. You won't be able to see turn one. It's flat up to a while. And then it really dips. Let's keep going around. Probably see the grandstand just peeking into view now. Still looks pretty modern. This circuit, I think, um, about 30 years old now. And here we go. So, so it's quite a sight, really. It makes you appreciate just, you know, how fast these cars can get up to. As you know, this kerb on the inside is raised quite a little bit, but there you go, look at this. Look at the run down to the lights. Kathleen in one of those circuits where the start line is ahead of the finish line. And this is it, this is the run. You can see it kind of crests just after the lights and then it goes down again for turn one.
I've run ahead here. I say run, I'm walking out of brisk pace. We're about to get, I think, properly kicked off this time. But yeah, this is a grid as well, as you can see. It's quite cool, isn't it? Quite cool. So that's going to run up, run up. This is, that's going to wrap up. It's really hot. <laughs> that's going to wrap up this, um, what is it? Circuit guide thing. Basically, I want to say thank you to all you 27,000 subscribers. You guys and girls have just, the fact that you watch the videos and live streams I do and subscribe and like is, just blows my mind. And the comments, I read all of the comments. I'm getting to the stage now where I can't physically respond to every comment, but I do my best. And the reason why I've done these videos and been sharing while I'm here, I just want to say thank you because I owe a lot of my happiness to all you guys and girls and you don't need to like you don't need to subscribe you don't need to watch what I do but yeah um, there's Max up there very happy winning it today a bit controversial with Perez looked like he had the pace on track anyway I couldn't hear the radio um, but yeah I just want to give something back so if you like this let me know in the comments and we can try and do some more I mean I'm very lucky with the channel it's you know it's a it's a mid-sized channel now so I can knock on doors and say to people, hey, can we come and cover this? And maybe we'll get a response. I'm very happy to do that. I love traveling. I love exploring. I love kind of sneaking into places that we're not meant to go into. But I think that's going to wrap it up. I really, really, really hope you enjoyed it. I really hoped this recording worked and multiple recordings. Very much thank you to my camera lady as well. She's waving in the background. And that's going to be it. The police are coming again. So we're going to end it here. And I'll see you. Well, actually... I might see you in Monaco. I'll see you next time.